Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Hope everyone's well and happy and healthy and uh, ready to do some painting today. Um, I have in front of me here an etch -a sketchbook which I started last summer um, as a kind of homage to um, Anne Mora Lindbergh and her book The Gift from the Sea which was written um, for us women a long time ago now. Um, and uh, I've slowly been putting things in but I did find that during the winter I didn't really want to think about the sea. <clears throat> so I'm starting it up again now this spring and um, I'm just going to quickly go through the paintings just quickly and today we're going to do some fish um, and we have done pebbles and we've done landscapes and we've done um, shells and uh, butterflies and dragonflies and, and so on. And on each page I've put a little quote from the book um, to read to go along as best I can with the subject. And um, today I've got this one here where Anne Laura Lindbergh is talking about um, finding your own identity through creative activity, which I think is um, brilliant. And so we will put that to one side. Um, if you want to get hold of a copy of this book, I know that you'll enjoy it if you haven't read it before. This one was given to me a long time ago by a friend of mine when I was living in Calgary called Brenda. I've lost touch with her now, but uh, that's that was in December 1992, which is... Uh, quite a long time ago now, isn't it? 92, 2002, 2012. That's 30 years ago. Gosh. Um, so we'll put those things to the side and um, I'm just going to put some, a thin line of washi tape around the edges of this um, just to try to really protect the, um, any other pages, the pages underneath and, um, just to give me a clean edge, really. Nothing particularly miraculous or strange about this, I don't think. Um, this looks a bit Christmassy, but never mind, it'll do. Put that out of the way now. I'm going to have to keep checking my timestamp on my um, um, camera here to make sure that I am actually recording, because the other day I did half an hour of work with nothing coming in, because I turned it off instead of turned it on. I don't know if anyone else there has ever done that. Um, anyone else out there has ever done that, but it's quite aggravating. Never mind, we'll survive. So what I'm going to do is um, some fish. And um, I'm going to try to be, um, as um, uh, Anne Maura Lindbergh suggested, that woman can best find herself by losing herself in some kind of creative activity. Um, activity which springs from within. So I'm going to take that as meaning just go for it. And um, so I'm going, I've got here my paints. I'm just going to tilt the camera so you can see my array of paints. So it's always very difficult to decide what to use. Um, this is the Gallo set that I have by A Gallo um, from Italy, which is nice. That gives some quite muted colours. Then I've got some of my um, little dishes here with things like turquoise and ultramarine, cobalt blue, cotter's pink, um, Naples yellow. This is um, sap green. Then here I've got my um, Kuretake starry colours, which I might use to embellish things with, with at the end. Then here we've got um, the um, uh, the Daniel Smith, um, what do you call it, Primatech colours that I have, half of those. Um, and this here is a few pinks that I put together the other day when I was doing something, when I was doing the sweet peas. 
Um, so I can't, I'm in one of those moods today where I can't decide. Sometimes I'm very, um, what's the word? Uh, sure of myself, if, if you like, as to how to go about it. But I didn't feel terribly well yesterday because I suffer from allergies. And I think yesterday I had a bit of a, I don't know what, but something. And um, consequently, it makes your brain go all kind of fuzzy, doesn't it? So I don't want to bore you with all my problems, but that's basically the reason why I can't decide. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by painting some little fishes. I'm going to sit down and then we'll see what happens. Now, goldfish are this kind of colour. Now, I want to show you a good way of painting a fish. It's like this. So fish aren't terribly difficult. I think you probably would agree. So you do a stroke like that and a stroke like that. Fill in the gap. Brilliant one to do with children. You can do big tails or small tails. You can do big fins or small fins. After you've done it, you can adjust the shape if you want. No problem at all. This is quite nice paper, this um, Etcher sketchbook, I think. I think it's quite nice. It seems to be fairly, um, what's the word? It's It has a sort of artistic feel to it in the sense that it seems to be like, um, it gives you some, oh, I have to forgive me for my lack of words today, it gives you some sense that you're, you're painting properly, but it's very forgiving as well. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I'm just going to go ahead, and I mean that, I'm going to go ahead and just paint some fish. Now we're doing our videos now without music, so I suggest that if you like music, and who doesn't, um, put some of your own music on if you want. I can't do that, you know, I can't just put music on in the background. Pass Kerr, um, we have, you know, what you call it, um, uh, copyright problems. Yes, you have to you have to you have to pay for the music that you use. So we use epidemic sound. Um which we pay for. And that's all copyright free. But I can't just put on in the background something that I want to listen to. I can't do that because YouTube stops us. Okay, I'm going to put some more bright ones in now. And when I've covered the page with these simple little fish, I will do some inking. And you can see as I'm going along, I'm sort of getting a little bit more adventurous and I'm kind of putting two colours on the page on the brush at the same time which is why it's always a good idea to do a warm-up I'm going to lift some of that off because I think that's a bit too much and we'll do some inking and we'll put in some details. Um, that's a nice colour, isn't it? I quite like that. So we'll put another one there. And that was, that was, I think that was orange with red. I 
like that. So I think I'll probably stick to a sort of pinky orange theme. There's so many ways of ending up with the same colour, aren't there? Um, let's put a bit of quinacridone gold in this one to liven it up a bit. And then this is quinacridone red gold. <clears throat> and uh, maybe we do another one over here. Perhaps I'll do one that's a bit fatter. <clears throat> this is actually really fun. I'm going to do a little round one here too. One of our cats had a fight today. He came in. Luckily, whatever happened um, didn't break the skin, but he lost a big chunk of fur from his side and he's got a nice bruise there where I think he might have had an argument with our neighbour's cat. And uh, poor Arthur. Those of you who know Arthur, he's a bit of a, a bit of a pickle is our Arthur. He does like to go out on the tiles. But this must have happened this morning. I think um, not long ago we were doing something like this and I was saying it's a good way of getting to know your paints and a good way to um, loosen up and it is. And it's a good way to practice your, uh, what do you call it, water control, paint control, to learn about paint mixing without the pressure of uh, creating, you know, the next um, Mona Lisa. But it would make a jolly nice little um, present for somebody. Let's make this one a bit pinker, shall we, over here. This one, I'm going to make this one. Because you can do this however you want to do it. You can do them more accurate if you want. I mean, when I say more accurate, I mean more like real fish. I think I might just put one more small one down here. But I don't think I'll make it that color. There we go. And the best way to do these is basically you paint an oval, an irregular oval, and then you extend the two sides there out to make the tail. And then you just come out the top like that, and out the bottom like that, and hey presto, you have a fish. So then having done that, you probably want to just add some extra color to the fins. whatever you feel like doing, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Again, practicing your water control, seeing what happens when you put a color on top of another color. Just 
making them a little bit more a little bit more um painterly that's the word in other words so they don't look quite so much like children's not that there's anything wrong with children's paintings <clears throat> I particularly like that one, so we won't do anything to him. Okay. And then um, I think <clears throat> we're going to put all sorts of eyes and all sorts of pen lines all over this, I think, next. So we will grab our fine liner. I think I'm going to try the point two. Not sure if it's going to work. Yes, that should be okay. This is a Stettler pigment liner. It's waterproof, uh, permanent ink and um, so I thought they would probably improve with a little bit of outline going on here to make them a little bit more whimsical so we'll give them mouths and eyes and I think fish have quite big eyes and you can give them quite goofy expressions and you can practice doing your fine lining and your shading. Oops, I'll just straighten that out a bit. So I put some Arnica cream on um, Arthur's wound, and then we found that he's got, uh, he's collected a whole set of ticks so we've treated him for that I, I was going to do him today i did the other cats yesterday uh, no i did the dogs yesterday and uh, yeah but luckily it didn't break the skin These two look similar, don't they? We can do um, scales as well on them if you want. You can draw scales like this. And I thought it would be nice if you, if you have any of this iridescent medium, which I think um, we did talk about this in one of our previous videos, you can just put little shiny bits on if you wanted to, just to make it a little bit shiny, sparkly, like fish are. This is a uh, Winsor & Newton iridescent medium. You could also use the Kiritake starry colors. I think you could do that too. That would be a slightly different effect, but very similar. But you might not want to do that. You might want to just keep it as it is. And I think also it would be quite nice in the spaces here. Back here, we've got um, some starfish and they have five five arms so I was thinking 
it might be quite fun just to put some I'm frantically counting as I'm going along some little starfish in between the fish And there we are, we could do that, and then we could put a very little bit of shadow on there. Make them a bit more 3D. And we can just go on and continue on. And we can have, we could, he could have lines on him, couldn't he, going like this, perhaps. The fish in the sea have so many different designs on them, more designs than any human being could ever think of, I think. Always reminds me of David Attenborough when I start thinking about underwater. Because he's done a lot of programmes, hasn't he, like that, about the sea and what's in it or what used to be in it, it's mostly full of plastic now. They're quite fun these, when you put their eyes on, they suddenly become very, uh, they have personality all of a sudden. And we could have another starfish here, couldn't we? So we just do the five arms and then sort of middle. And they have a kind of row. Well, they, they vary, but some of them are like this. And then they have circles or something like circles going on. And then a little tiny bit of shading. Okay, next fish. Like I said, whoops, you can do all sorts of uh, embellishments with gold or or more pen and ink. You can go on forever. I do want to put some.
some weeds and things in. as well and we obviously have to have another one of these down here finish that one off later I'm sure that your imagination will be sparked by the idea of doing fish. There are literally an infinite number of ways of interpreting this particular motif. And you can give them funny faces if you want. I don't know if you can hear the pigeons in the background. So there we are, and we'll put another starfish there. Finish that later. And then perhaps if you look back to our other pictures in here that we've done of the sea, you might want to, perhaps we could do, a, how about we do a sea urchin? That is, uh, that starts off sort of similar in the middle and it has double rows of dots like that. And then around the outside edge, like that in a circle. And then we're going to paint that one very lightly in as Potter's pink. And we could have a shell over here. And we could have a um, sand dollar. So just a circle and then this shape, teardrops all the way around like that. Very light shadow. And this is going to be very pale pink as well. I'll just color in the teardrop shapes, I think, and then just put a little bit underneath. And this one. Blue and this one a little bit like that and let's give that a shadow underneath and then I suppose we could have some some bits and pieces of seaweed in a kind of Yeah, 
in a kind of random sort of way. And you could colour that in with a little bit of green if you wanted to. Just a tiny little bit. I wouldn't colour it in very accurately myself, but just to give the hint. So there we are. You could take that a lot further. You could even remember the final fish. Let's give him a face, poor thing. And obviously there's quite a bit more work you could do here as far as putting in fins and bones and all sorts of decorations. I think they all need something on their tails and their fins to delineate the fins from the body really, don't they? But there's lots of different ways to do that. As well as using a different color, you can shade obviously with the pen. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and uh, I'm going to take a photo see what's what and whether we need to come back and do any more. So it's all dry now and um, I could leave it the way it is at the moment, I could, um, but I think I'll just, uh, I might just um, add a few bits and pieces. So I'm just going to put some stripes into that one there and um, I want to put some Oh, I didn't tell you anything about the brushes. I was just using a round uh, number seven synthetic. And um, now I'm using a number three round. Uh, oh yes, I, what I wanted to do was to just do some, some uh, scales. Just a few scales on this one. Like that, just curvy. I'm not sure if that's the way the scales go or whether they go the other way. I've been looking at pictures. I shouldn't look at pictures. I should look at the real thing on fish. And I think we'll just do some lines going this way on that one too. This has got some quite nice texture on it, so I think I'll just paint the fins a little bit darker and leave that texture alone. Same goes for that one and that one and this one, in fact. So I think we've probably got to the point where I wouldn't mind stopping. I think I could, I could put a few more little shells in as well. That wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? You could have one of those little ones that goes like that. Not quite sure what sort of shell that's meant to be. Uh, that's my reference material. Many shells. I don't know. I guess I was thinking of one like that. It just needs to be a bit more pointed in the middle. There we go. That's it. And a little bit of shadow for 
good measure. So there we are. I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to leave that one with you. Have fun with that. Give it a try. It's really fun, very relaxing. You can put yourself to sleep in no time at all. Um, once you've finished doing the drawing and everything, there's nothing to stop you coming in with some um, embellishments like this uh, um, iridescent medium, for example, and just do a few dots because a lot of fish they just have a few shiny bits along the top, don't they? Like that. Or oh, they look shiny anyway. And uh, if you use darker colours, that shows up really well. But when it's dry, it actually shows up more in any case. So I'm not going to bother with any more of that at the moment. And I will let you go. Uh, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, please. And turn on notifications so you hear when a new video goes up. Um, don't forget to look into membership. We've got membership here on YouTube and we've also just started up a Patreon, which um, is going to be uh, growing. It's very small at the moment, only just really a bit of a soft launch. So if you're interested in Patreon, um, go and search Diane Anton Studio over on Patreon and you'll see that you would be number two in our membership if you want to be. So I'll see you over there and um, have a lovely evening and I'll try and stay awake for the rest of the day. So bye everybody. See you again soon. Bye bye for now.